Welcome back to Discovering an Educated Life. Today, we're gonna talk Christmas books. Um, if you don't know, my name is Megan and I'm a homeschooling mom and my passion is books. I love books. Um, so grab your coffee or hot chocolate like I have tonight and um, I have a lot of books to share with you. So um, let me say, um, this season's been really difficult for us this year, just transitioning. And I have so many favorite books. So this is gonna be just a video of all of my all-time favorites. I have um, kind of broken it down into sections. I'm gonna try to make it as brief as possible, but I have hundreds of Christmas books. Um, we own thousands of books because I homeschool and I'm just always been passionate about books. Um, some of them even from my childhood, but then I also am super passionate about Christmas. So if you are, if you know me, um, you know that Christmas is my thing. And so I have so many. So I'm going to start today talking about, um, like I said, all my all-time favorites, but specifically talking about board books and like just the, for your toddler, like what are some of the favorite board books that I had when my daughter was little. And so I'm going to share those ones first. So I'm gonna start with this one is so cute. It's called What is Christmas by Michelle Medlock Adams. And you can see we have some wear. This was a new book. I think I got this when my daughter was maybe nine months old, her first Christmas to share with her. And it literally is just explaining like what Christmas is. And it explains like that it's not about the gifts and it ends with Jesus' birth. And it's just the sweetest little toddler Christmas book. Um, and we still read this one every year. So my eight-year-old still, we read this book. Um, that's definitely a favorite. Um, this one is another well-used. I think this was one from her first Christmas as well. And it's Oh Little Town of Bethlehem, A Pageant of Lights. And so this one um, used to light up. And then it played a little town of Bethlehem when you got to the last page. And um, the batteries are out. I'm not sure if I, I think I can replace them in here. So I'll, I'll try to do that. I didn't even realize it had a spot. So I think they might've run out this year, but we'll definitely replace those. And this was a favorite um, of my daughter's and she was little probably because it lights up, but also I loved it because the story this was another, I think all of these were probably ones I purchased for her first Christmas. This is Christmas in the Manger. So this book is really beautiful and it's super simple and just the story of Jesus' birth and um, really easy for that toddler age. And all of these kind of transitioned well, even into like early readers um, for my daughter. And then this was, I just liked the glitter. <laughs> This is A Very Merry Christmas Prayer, and I think this was like more when my daughter was a few years old, but um, she was really into just foresty stuff and glitter at that age, and so this was a really nice board book. That's by Bonnie Rickner Jensen, and I really liked this one. Um, I'm going to link um, as many of these as I can find below, but some of these are going to be older that might be a little bit more difficult to find. So... I love all of these old golden books. These are my favorite. Um, any of these, like, this is Baby's Christmas. And this one is, I think this one's from 1959. And I have quite a few. I'm not going to share all of those because that would just be overwhelming. And so kind of now I'm transitioning into more of this, like, early elementary school age. So um, I know you might not want to go search every thrift store or every like vintage shop trying to find these like I did, but this is a good alternative. <laughs> this is just um, a selection of Christmas stories and I'll show you on the back. And this is, was brand new, but well-worn. You see the whole spines coming out because um, we've read this over and over and over, but it has a bunch of these classics on the back. Um, and so we actually, I will share in our regular books. This is Eloise Wilkin Illustrator. Um, we have also the collection that's just all of the old Eloise Wilkin because these were starting to get messed up. But the Christmas ones are so beautiful. And these, all of these are not Eloise Wilkin on the back, just this baby's Christmas one is, but it has like um, the Christmas ABC, the Nutcracker, the Little Christmas Elf. It has. The First Christmas Story, Jingle Bells, The Night Before Christmas, The Pokey Little Puppy, and The 12 Days of Christmas. So we really enjoyed that. Um, another, this is more like kindergarten age, I believe. We really got into like the little blue truck. 
And then this one was fun because the last page has the little Christmas tree lighting up. And this was another one that um, my daughter really liked. Probably like four or five, like preschool, kindergarten age when she was starting to read on her own. Um, more early elementary school. Any in these in any of these in this series, um, obviously, and not everyone's going to live in Ohio, but this Santa is coming to you and it has your state. And these are fun. Actually, my daughter and me just read this one. We read this one again today, and I uh, really like that it has your city, so it's like relevant. We live um, in an urban area, and so it's, it's neat that it has the cities right there in it. Um, and super relevant if your child is old enough to know about their city. Um, this was another fun one. Um, when I had my daughter like in kindergarten, preschool age, I always like to like take a break from school at Christmas time, like school, like whatever our curriculum was. And I found books like this helpful to kind of keep working on some of those skills. So we did some basic preschool curriculum, but these kind of books, like this 10 tiny gingerbread men, um, was really awesome to practice those skills and he's like counting down backwards and subtracting so this one was a fun one we used a lot in preschool and kindergarten at christmas time and that's the same as this and that's why i'm sharing these two this is the santa's elves by sue DeSico, and this one um i don't see who this one was by it's a tiger tales book but this was helpful we used this probably like kindergarten preschool age as well and it has these letters that open and ha they have different things like lollipop mittens like just different things for each letter so when we were first learning phonics this book was really cool to do at christmas um the so bernstein bears are our favorite in our house this is another one that we really love and this is a little lengthier for a bernstein bear book and it's about um them getting their christmas tree and they're going up on this mountain to get it um because papa bear didn't listen to mama bear so <laughs> my daughter thought this one was hilarious and um we still read this one every year and then this is just a sweet one it's the bernstein bears very first christmas and we have others like other Christmas Bernstein Bear books, but these two are our favorites. And these are more like that early elementary age. Um, this one is the Family Christmas Treasury. So this has a ton in it. It has Merry Christmas, Curious George. I'm reading off the back, it has Tacky. So this was perfect for that kindergarten age because those were ones we read in kindergarten anyways. Like we read about Tacky in kindergarten. We did uh, My Father's World. So a lot of those books were part of the recommended Curious George. So we got to do the Christmas stories at Christmas time that have the finest Christmas tree, Lyle at Christmas, like Lyle Crocodile, uh, Merry Christmas Ollie, A Small Christmas, Merry Christmas Striganona, and Twas the Night Before Christmas. So this is a pretty big treasury and all of those are in here. So, um, this was great. We loved doing that. And we still read that one um, every year. And this is one of those little song books, but my daughter really loved this. And probably kindergarten, um, first, second grade, she still, it has all the little songs and you click the button. And um, it's one of those things that I eventually want to hide, but she really loves it. So we continue it, <laughs> um, getting it out every year, I should say. So now I'm gonna, I have a whole stack here and I had so many of these books I could share and I couldn't share them all um, because we would have been here all night. So I have a pretty substantial stack of just like first Christmas story, like nativity books. And I own a lot of these books. So I just picked out my very favorites that we've like, have got the most used and we loved over the use and that we have loved over the years. Um, so I'll just start sharing them. This is An Angel Came to Nazareth, A Story of the First Christmas. This is just a scholastic book, but it um, we got a lot of reading out of this one and I liked a lot of the artwork. Um, and this says the pictures are by Maggie Neen. Um, and so that right there. We really liked the art in this one. So this is one we've read quite a bit. Um, this was probably a favorite around that kindergarten age as well. 
It's the very special baby. And this is from Harvest House Publishers. We really liked this one. It was really bright and colorful for that like kindergarten age. And we just really enjoyed this one too. Uh, sometimes the pictures um, and books like this can kind of make the book. Uh, this one we really love. This is Good Night Manger by Laura Sassy. And it's illustrated by Jane Chapman in another one. So this book, what I loved about it is that some of the, um, the characters and the depiction as far as like skin tone and how they looked was a little more accurate to the place where this took place. And I found that really refreshing and a nativity that it wasn't like a blonde haired, blue eyed baby. Um, but this one, again, this is from Zonder Kids. Um, we really liked this one, kind of that early elementary age as well. And once my daughter could read, this was one of her favorite ones to read. Um, this is another Scholastic. This is the star and it's also another one that does not depict the blonde hair, blue eyed baby you see sometimes. And the nativity, it's more accurate to what you would see in the area where Bethlehem is. So this was a really, um, this was a really nice book as well. Um, and really age appropriate again, that early elementary age. What star is this? I loved this one and it is about the star and it's like the journey of it and it shows it like above earth and more beautiful illustrations. This one, Joseph Slate illustrated by Allison J and that's another Scholastic. This one, I don't know if I said, was Joyce Dunbar and Gary Blith. Um, so yeah, and I said about one. This is the first night um, another, we have so many of these like scholastic ones, but we've just picked them up over the years at different cells or on the scholastic website. And this is by BJ Hennessy and paintings by Steve Johnson. And this one was one that just had a lot of beautiful artwork again, like Christmas time. Um, I'm a very visual person. So we loved this one as well. Um, who's coming to our house? And this is the story of the animals. And it's a favorite of almost all kids to learn about this when you're learning farm animals. Who doesn't love a story like that when you're learning about the farm animals? So this is by Joseph Slate and again, Ashley Wolf. Um, this one, I bought my daughter's first Christmas and we read it every year and it's a favorite. Room for a little one. Um... It's a Christmas tale and it's about the animals in the manger and how they have room for a little one. And um, Martin Waddle and Jason Cockcroft wrote this one. And I'm just gonna show you. It's just showing Tired Donkey is coming. And this one, um, we it just holds a really special place in my heart because we've read this one sometimes like four or five or six times, if not more a season. And it's just, the book's held up pretty well as much as we've read it, but um, I kind of kept this one up because it was paper and I got it her first Christmas for her. Whereas the board books I let her play with, but this one um, just really has a special place in my heart. So we also have this one, which I bought, used, it's very much older. It's the story of Christmas for children. And we really like that one also and it's um not as accurate of the depictions but i liked the simplicity of the story but i mean like the depictions of the people but the simplicity in the story we really enjoyed um for her at like five six year old maybe seven and this one has seen a little bit of wear i think she really enjoyed this one the shepherd's christmas story and this one um is about the perspective of the shepherds and it's a little lengthier but she enjoyed this one a lot you can see like the covers getting a little messed up and has some wear so this next i have a little bit more to show you guys i know a lot of christmas books and i could oh, i don't think i showed the shepherd's christmas story was by dandy daily mccall and it's illustrated by dominique catalano and i said like i said i'm gonna try to link as many of these as i can 
to share with you guys. And this one is just has ideals on the back. I'm not positive who wrote this one. This one I believe came from like a vintage shop. So um, I'm gonna share with you guys. These are my all time, sorry. I'm like leaning and getting all of these. I have a little bit more here to share. These are just my all time favorites. So these are gonna be those Christmas books that just hold this really special place for us of all different um, Christmas topics but they are our all-time favorites. So let me just jump right in because I have a lot here. 10 Tales of Christmas. This book has like excerpts from other books, but it also just has some original stories, but it has things from Dr. Seuss, Laura Ingalls Wilder. And I believe I got this at a thrift store many years ago and it has stood, it has held the test of time in our house and we have just enjoyed reading it and I intend to read it again this year. Um, anything by Jan Brett. So this is probably not technically considered a Christmas book in your, anyone's house, but the mitten is definitely a winter book. And so we also have, I just brought all these together. Who's that knocking on Christmas Eve? And we have the three snow bears instead of like the three little bears. They're like, um, polar bears instead of like Goldilocks and the three bears, they're polar bears. And so that's a favorite of my daughter's. Anything, but we have many more Jan Brett books, I believe, um, even than this that are just Christmas themed, but I did not grab them all. Uh, Home for Christmas. I love the artwork in any of these Jan Brett books. So they're just so beautiful, the illustrations. Um, so moving right along, this I, is another I picked up probably from a vintage shop, maybe a thrift store. It's called A Round of Carols, and I found this to be really great this year because it had a bunch of carols. We're doing the um, Sunlight Advent, and this had um, some of the carols and things in it, and it has all of the lyrics. So this book is really great. Um, this is called A Pussycat's Christmas by Margaret Wise Brown, and it's a favorite of my daughter. She loves cats. So I threw that one in, and I love anything by Margaret Wise Brown as well. Anything also by Patricia Polacco. Um, and we have a lot of her stuff as well. And this is The Trees of the Dancing Goats. Now, this is not a Christmas story. This is a Hanukkah story, but I threw it in because um, my daughter really enjoyed this book. And we've read this quite frequently as well. This is called A Wreath of Christmas Legends by Phyllis McGinley. And it's an old, pretty neat book. And it has these legends, I'm trying to find like, um, from different cultures. So they just have these little legends from different cultures about um, different Christmas stories. But we... I should have like marked them, but they're just neat little illustrations and little fun stories. And so we've actually enjoyed that one quite a bit. This is a favorite of ours. It's a little lengthier. It's the story of Holly and Ivy. And again, we did not get as into this one until my daughter was a little older um, because it is pretty lengthy. Like uh, there's a lot there. <laughs> so, but I mean, every page is pretty lengthy. So this wasn't something necessarily for like kindergarten age, but first, second grade, um, she got more into that. And now she's a third grader this year and she's eight. And so I'm, I loved this book, but I don't know that she fully grasped it when she was younger. Now that she's a little older, I'm hoping she really enjoys it. And I think she will. Um, this is every year we pull this out. <laughs> Polar Express, we watch the movie and do little fun stuff to do with it. And I think everyone, a lot of you probably know this story. And some of these are gonna be classics like this. And I, I just love having the book and not just the movie. So the Polar Express. I love this rendition of the Nutcracker. Um, it's well-worn. <laughs> I got this for my daughter one year for Christmas and it's, excuse me, um, illustrated by Dawn Daly from the story of E.T. Hoffman. E.T.A. Hoffman, I'm sorry. So we're studying Tchaikovsky this year. I was trying to see like if I had any more information about this because the I love the pictures. Again, I'm such a freak about pictures. Um, but it, it has a decent amount like of depth. It's obviously not like the full story, but 
it was really good. I would say again, like that first to second grade age and my daughter got a lot more into it. And since we're studying Tchaikovsky and the Nutcracker this year um, for a composer study at Christmas, I'm hoping that she'll really enjoy that one a little more now. This is a pretty cool, so this doesn't have the slip cover. I lost it years ago, but this is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And I have a couple versions of this. I'm opening it upside down, but I do have a, a couple different versions. But this one I found to be just a good amount for maybe upper elementary school. And so this is a favorite of mine that I actually have not shared with my daughter yet because I felt like she wasn't really quite ready for it. But it's something that I love and I'm hoping in the next, probably this year, but at least by next year. This one is A Farm Prepares for Winter, Sleep Tight Farm by Eugene Doyle. Um, this book we really liked, and it's it honestly is more of a fall book, but it ends, it's all of the preparation through the whole winter, and that it ends with them like decorating for Christmas, and it's just so... Like it snows and the pictures are so beautiful. And so um, I definitely classify this as a Christmas book. And we read it usually in the fall leading into Christmas. And I think I got this one for her in like first or second grade. Um, another classic, Rudolph. And this, I have the 50th anniversary version here that I bought her. And she like ruins every slip cover and throws it away. So <laughs> this is, it had a slip cover at one point in time. But it's just kind of those original, um, pictures from the movie but again I love to have the book and not just the movie and we own all the movies as well on the DVD format because we love Christmas but that's um just another one I had to have on my shelf sorry my like crazy lights are going wild tonight um cranberry Christmas oh I'm sorry is another one um I love all the Cranberry series. It's by what, Wendy and Henry or and Harry Devlin. Devin. I have a bunch of the Cranberry books like Thanksgiving and Halloween, but Christmas is another favorite. I have like a hair. There we go. Um, Christmas is another one of our favorites. So um, if you've never read these, this skin, really great. The amount of um, like text is probably good for about a second to third grader. So we found, we discovered Cranberry when we were doing five in a row when my daughter was younger and we've loved it ever since. I think like the Cranberry Thanksgiving is the one in that. This is the year of the perfect Christmas tree. And this one is so great. It's about um, this girl that grew up in the Appalachian Mountains and just the depictions in the book um, of like the little mountain town there. Like, I love this. I love anything from Appalachia. Like, look at the, the cast iron over the little fireplace there. Um, it has like the Christmas play at the end of it is beautiful. Everything is just um, so well done that I, I'm trying to find that in this book. I just fell in love with this and um, I believe this is when her dad's away because it's been a couple years since we read it that um that her dad was away yes and he comes home and so I actually bought this one for my daughter when my husband was in Korea I thought that's I couldn't remember if this is when it was and it is and I cried and she cried and then um he was there for the year um the year it was like first grade Christmas and it's like the her dad's away and the military and he comes home and it's it's a tearjerker if you're a military family for sure um this one is not necessarily Christmas Eve Bunting's Night Tree but it's about this family that goes into the woods and decorates a tree for the birds at Christmas and um we are nature lovers we love anything to do with the outdoors there's an owl on the cover if you know me i love owls so i couldn't pass this book up when i was doing my list either <laughs> um christmas farm is another good one it's about a christmas tree farm and 
it's a really good storyline and it just looks like everything amazing that reminds me of Christmas. I love everything down to the lettering. It's by Mary Lynn Ray and illustrated by Barry Root. So did I, I'm not sure if I shared this was by Gloria Houston and the pictures were by Barbara Cooney. If I did, I'm sharing it again. Um, and then obviously everyone has to have a copy of the night before Christmas. I almost said nightmare again. I keep saying that because we watched the nightmare before Christmas a few weeks ago and I keep saying that. Um, <laughs> But the night before Christmas, and this one is just this is by Candy Cane Press, and it's a board book format, so it's stood the test of time for my daughter. And the pictures are good. I probably said that about every book because I love if a, if I don't love the pictures in a book when it comes to Christmas books or picture books, I'm not gonna love it. <laughs> so um, all of the books I've selected are gonna be ones that had beautiful pictures um trying to make that glare come off there and so this is just the traditional story but it's a really large um like board book format that has stood the test of time in our house written by clement clark moore and illustrated by donald mills so that's the version this is and that is it i don't want to say that's it because that's a lot of books and it took a lot of time for me to tell you i tried to keep it as brief as possible and i have stacks and stacks and stacks of books over here that i didn't share because it would have just taken me literally all night to share every christmas book we own but i just wanted to dig through what we is tried and true and we know we love in our home and that's what that's what you got tonight so um, let me know what your favorite Christmas books are. Let me know what you are enjoying reading this holiday season. Um, let me know if there's any special advents or special studies you're doing or just any special holiday traditions you have. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will be sharing lots of things throughout the holiday season that we are enjoying and that we are doing as a family. Um, kind of taking a little break from some of our traditional schooling. So I'm hoping to share um, just a little bit of different stuff in our life and in our homeschool journey, um, as well as just lots of great books and lots of great movies and other things. So don't forget to hit like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ding the bell. Thank you. I'll see you next time.